Welcome back, everyone. In this exercise, we're going to go through the process of computing the caps table for a startup company from the very initial stage when it, there were just the owners and then through multiple rounds of financing, including all the different scenarios of an up round, a down round, and a down round with uh, different types of anti-dilution provisions. Let's get started. Obviously, if you have not downloaded the template, go ahead, pause the video and do that now. The first table, which is the first tab, um, table one, is the basic caps table when the company was just starting. So there are only two owners and here are the shares that they have issued each other. So the caps table is to compute the percentage ownership. So first thing we need to do is to compute the total, or uh, the total number of shares. And then the percentage ownership is just the individual whose number of shares divided by the total in the firm. Okay, can make that an absolute reference. I have pre um, set the format for this. If you want to see more decimal places, just simply incre increase that. Um, and then when you paste, again, oftentimes I just paste the formula so I can maintain all the format. Or if you want to include the format, you can uh, simply just copy it. Lastly, we want to add up the percentage ownership to make sure that you always add up to 100%. So obviously this is very simple and very straightforward. Um, again, I want you to take the time to take a look at how the model is set up and the notes that I included in here. This is what we, uh, what I use for documentation in Excel. Again, I want to really emphasize that when you go to work, for your own sanity and especially for your coworkers' sanity, please, please um, color code and note and put notations and document your your model. All right. Now, this company, uh, when Janet and Stephen just founded the company, they don't not really know how much the company is worth. They put in their own money, they put in their own effort, but there's no market value. That happens when they seek outside financing. So let's move on to table two. In table two, they decide to seek outside financing. They find a, an angel investor, uh, it's called GBA, Golden Beach Associates. And um, there are a number of things that you want to take, uh, take into account. One is that the amount of cash they need is $750,000. In the initial initiation, they were offered $750,000 for 60% of the firm. So they have to give up a majority of the firm. So let's take a look at what this will look like. Again, I encourage you to have the textbook handy to read through it in the same section where we talk about uh, how to compute the market valuation, the post market valuation and pre market pre-money market valuation uh, so that you know step by step how to set this up if you need to do it on your own. So this is an initial round, so there's no up or down. This is the sit round the very first time. So the thing that is being negotiated is this percentage. So this is the, uh, whether or not they're willing to give up 60% or they want to only give up 50% or 40%. So this is what is being negotiated. Uh, the other two information is given the num total current number of shares. You notice in here this is from table uh, 11 1. So, uh, so this is what we have computed earlier. And um, they know they need $750,000. So this is not really not very negotiable. They need that to take the product to market. So now we're going to, uh, the first offer they receive is 60%. So let's figure out if that's the case, what will, what will the caps table look like? So the, number, the number of new shares to be issued is based on this formula. So we take the total current shares, that's $50,000, times the new percentage that the GBA wanted. So this, right now that is 60%, uh, divided by 1 minus 60%. So if they were to sell, uh, if, if they were going to take the money, $750,000 from GBA, they'll have to give GBA 750,000 shares. So the new market value per share, again, you can figure that out, is equal to the amount of cash they need, which is $750,000, divided by the new number of shares that they have. Okay. So, the new, so the market value of the firm is $10 per share. 
Next, let's take a take a look at the caps table. The caps table is important because it tells us how the future benefits will be distributed. Uh, it may be different. You can have uh, in the fine print different way to distribute it and a different way for um, control. But assuming there's no additional fine print, then the percentage ownership here will dictate control as well as shares of future profits. So this is very important. Uh, the number of shares for Janet and Stephen is from table 11.1 because that has already been issued. So that's what they have. And then GBA, this is what we are determining. So right now, currently the proposal is 775,000 shares. So the total, again, this is the same uh, in terms of the caps table will be 125,000 shares. To compute the percentage ownership, we take the number of shares per owner, divide that by the total number of shares. So you will see, once we copy this down, and you can double check that this indeed add up to 100%. Okay. And you'll see that uh, GBA get the 60% that they asked for. So that should always be a check. And the percentage ownership for Janet and Stephen has decreased in proportion. So compared to before, Janet owned 80%, Stephen owned 20%. Now Janet still own uh, a lot more than uh, Stephen, but uh, proportionally they have decreased relative to GBA. Finally, we can look at the post money valuation. It said that's equal to amount of cash needed, divided by the percentage ownership. There are two ways you can compute that, and I'll show you another way. So let's take the amount of cash needed. So that's $750,000 divided by the percentage ownership they want, which is 60%. So that is $1.25 million. And if you take the total number of shares outstanding times the market value per share, $10, you get the same. And of course, that will make sense. The pre-money valuation is the post money valuation minus the new cash that you raise, so minus $750,000. So that means that the company that Janet and Stephen had uh, was worth $500,000 at the time they went to the market. So this is the first seat run, and this is still in your negotiation. So Janet and Stephen may, uh, may go back to GBA and say, we are still interested in the deal, 60% is too much for us. What can we do to bring this down? And that is the story in table 11.3. So table 11.3 tells us the story that they went back to negotiate with um, GBA and they make a counter offer and say, we are willing to give up 50%, but not 60%. And this 50% is important because at 50%, they have equal ownership. So uh, discussion has to be, uh, a future decision has to be discussed and compromises may become necessary. Instead, if one of the um, members or one of the investors has 60%, then GBA will, will be calling all the shots from then on. Okay, so uh, table 11.3 is basically created exactly the same way as table 11.2. So I'm gonna ask you to pause the video, try to retrace the step that we did for table 11.2 and try to do that on your own. And when you come back, I'll show you the, uh, the solutions. Great, did you get these answers? If not, go back and check. Your formula should be exactly the same between table 11.2 uh, and table 11.3. Uh, so the, the really important thing is to make sure you get 50,000 shares. And again, that is you can do that using this formula. If you do have questions, um, you can always um, send me a note. Now let's move on to table 11.4. So things were going well for the business and they need even more money. So in this case, this is an up round scenario. In fact, you don't really know whether it's an up round or down round until you determine the new market value per share and compare that to the old. 
So let's take a look. So in here, the amount of cash they need is $2 million and the percentage ownership they want is uh, 50%. 50 so let's first figure out what the number of new share would be. So, um, so total number of shares. So again, that is from table 11.3 uh, times the new percentage they want divided by one minus the percentage they want. Okay. So that turns out to be 100,000 shares. And we take the amount of money they need divided by the number of new shares, and that's $20 per share. So now we can compare that to table 11.3. The market share value was $15 per share. So it went up. So that's how we know this is an up rung scenario. Next, we can compute the caps table. Um, the up rung scenario uh, is the same. There's no difference. So first, let's take the information from table 11.3 for the current shareholders. So the current shareholders include Janet, Stephen, and GBA. Okay, so we have Janet, Stephen, and GBA. So the, these are the existing shareholders. Uh, Pear Tree partner is a new partner, and they are going to get 100,000 shares for their $2 million investment. So let's take a look at the new caps table. So in this new table, Janet and Steven's um, uh, percentage went change again. Um, and look at table 11.3, obviously they went down, but um, they went down proportionally, right? So instead of 20, 40%, they own now own 20%. Instead of 10%, Stephen now own 5%. And GBA, instead of owning 50% of the firm, they now own 25%. And the new partner is the majority holder now, um, 50%. So, if the existing shareholders band together, they can, they still can uh, continue the direction of the firm. So again, this is important. This is assuming that have a good working relationship. But when you bring in a new partner, that can also be challenging because now the two uh, external uh, or the non-founders, GBA and Pear Tree partners, now have a majority owner uh, ownership compared to the founders, Jenna and Steven. Okay. So now let's take a look at the Series A valuation. So this is very similar to sit round. We take the amount of cash rate they raise, which is $2 million, divided by the percentage ownership that they need. So the post, uh, the, uh, the post money valuation, this is post round A. So you want to be very clear on which round we are dealing with. And the P value, um, Valuation is the amount of uh, total market value minus um, the cash that you raise. So that um, will be $2 million. And also important is for us to take a look at um, what happened to the investments of the founder and the um, last investor. So we'll take a look at um, Janice value. So his, uh, her new value is equal to the number of shares you own. So 40,000 shares times the new market value per share, $20, minus her old equity, right? Her old equity is from table 11.3. Her old equity is the number of shares she own times the market value at that point in time. So Janet's investment increased by $200,000. We can do the same calculation for Stephen. So Stephen go from 10,000 shares at $20. And that has, it was in, an increase from 10,000 shares at $15. So Stephen's uh, uh, investment also went up. So does GPH. GPH has 50,000 shares and they are now worth $20, $20 per share versus they have 50,000 50, shares at $15. So in short, it's not easy to, to see that conceptually, if, even if you, do, you don't go through the formulas. Uh, market value went from 15 
to $20. So everybody gained $5 per share. And so for Janet, $5 per share times 40,000 shares is $200,000. For Stephen, that is $5 times 10,000 shares is $50,000. For GBH, is $5 times 50,000 shares, so that's $250,000. And in total, they their value increased by five hundred thousand dollars. Now, if you look at the post money valuation, the company was worth one point five million dollars, and now the pre money valuation is two million. So the company, the original owner's value increased by from 1.5 million to 2 million, which is $500,000. So remember, each new round establishes a new market value. And that's because these companies are not traded. Okay. I'll conclude the video, uh, this video here. In the next video, we're going to look at what happened if instead of an up round scenario, we have a down round scenario. And we will look at the three cases of a down round scenario where we have no, uh, with different anti-dilution provisions. See you back here soon.